No, 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 bad man. Hello, how you doing, Mike Bradley? Hope you're doing well as always. As you can see from the title of this video, a lot of you have asked for this. I am doing my guitar tour of 2016. Okay, so April 2016. I don't know what the date is today. The 20, 20. <laughs> 28th! <laughs> Alright, so it's 28th uh, April, you'll be seeing this tomorrow on the 29th. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do um, a roundup of all my guitars basically. Now, most of them are here. Uh, the one what I usually have in my flat I bought around here as well. Uh, but I do have a couple at uh, my mother's house. <laughs> so I'm going to pop down there as well so that you're getting my full guitar tour. I don't want to cheap shot you man, you know what I mean? I don't want to cheap, I'm not that type of guy. So, um, this could be a long one, so let's get started. So, Uno number one. Right, so the first guitar, this lovely blue Strat, um, which I always just call the blue one. Um, I got this guitar in 2002, uh, and it's a 1999 Strat. <laughs> Played. Um, there's a few scratches and a few little dings here and there, which you'll probably see in some overview shots I'm doing now. Um, this guitar is really cool because I always say to people, don't knock the second-hand guitars. I bought this guitar second-hand. This is American Fender Strat, uh, standard American Strat. I got this for 300 quid or 300 pounds, um, and uh, I think. It was only a year old, I think. So I remember I was 17 and the guy uh, lived near Thorpe Park. And this was before Tom Tom. So I kind of drove to his uh, studio. He was moving to America. And I think uh, he was originally asked him for £350. And, you know, me being a little bit of a haggler, especially being 17 years old, <laughs> I kind of said, I've got 300 quid on me and cash. You know, and I kind of went and kind of checked the notation and I pretended I knew what I was doing. But uh, it's just a great guitar. A lot of my early uh, band life was spent with this guitar. Um, there's a crack down the body where I used to always snap strings this guitar, always. And I was doing quite a big showcase gig and the first chord of the first song, uh, the, the guitar player did an E chord, the rhythm guitar player did an E and I came in and went, wow, to hit the low six and I snapped the six string. And because it's a floating trem, the whole thing went out. So out of anger, I threw it against the wall. And uh, she's got a nice crack down the back. But uh, if this was a Fender, it would have been, not a Fender, sorry, if this was a Gibson, it would have been in pieces. But Fenders, they're pretty hardcore. <laughs> This is my Strat, this isn't the original pickups, this is the Fender Noiseless pickups I put in, oh man, probably in about 2004, 5, I can't quite remember, so at least 10 years now they've been in there. And uh, she's great, I don't play her as much anymore, but I do certainly still play her. And um, I took the string tree off because it did have two string trees, but I don't like the look of two string trees. So uh, this is my blue Strat, like I say, a 1999 Fender Stratcaster. Uh, a lot of the 90 strats are good, so if you see any, they're worth getting as opposed to um, some of the newer stuff. Um, my blue strat. <laughs> guitar I have to show you and some of my regular viewers might notice this this is the guitar I won a couple of years ago this is a Sterling uh, by Music Man AX40 and um, I won this guitar at the is it the London Guitar Show or I think in 2014 I won this um, I was on the Music Man only bought Music Man booth 
and uh, got chatting to some of the guys and they said oh we should pop back later we do like the devil duel and I get quite shy believe it or not I, I'm quite a shy guy I know I might come across quite an, um, animated and people who meet me probably don't believe that but I am a little bit shy especially with stuff like that and um, it's only come my mate was with me and he's the opposite of shy <laughs> and all right Stu if you're watching and uh, he was like kind of forced me uh, to, you know was pushing me to get up there and so they were saying he wanted to get up, I was like, I'll oh, go on in, and I got up and, and played, and there's some footage, uh, I'll put a link in the description box if you want to watch it. Uh, I start off playing not great, and then I kind of get a bit more comfortable in that. Uh, but, cut the story short, I won this guitar, and uh, it's a rock machine. I've had to put this guitar in E flat because um, I can't find the Allen key for it. <laughs> Damn you Floyd Rose! kind of colour, I don't think that's probably a maple cap on the top there, but it's got a Floyd, um, and um, yeah, she sounds great, I think these are about 500 quid brand new, I think, something like that, um, I haven't played it a ton, but I will never get rid of it, um, because, you know, it's like a trophy, you know, it's first thing I've, one of the first things I think I've ever won, and uh, I win a guitar, so uh, it's got it made in Indonesia. But that shouldn't put any downers on it because it's a great sounding guitar. <laughs> My sterling rock machine <laughs> with a Floyd Rose. Guitar number three. This is a very dear friend of mine. This is my Yamaha Pacifica 112. Um, I got this guitar at the Wembley Guitar Show in 1997 when I was very, very young. I was uh, just 10, 13. And um, I, I wanted a Stratocaster. I had a Telecaster copy guitar at the time. And which I bought from the local paper for like forty pounds, and I sold that. And uh, I wanted a Pacifica. I saw these advertising Total Guitar magazine, and um, I didn't want to. I wanted a Strat, but I didn't want a Squire because, you know, I'd been like, it's not a Fender, you know. And I saw some of you in the in Total Guitar. I think it must have been, and that these were great guitars. And um, I was like, I've had this guitar a long time, nearly twenty years, um, and uh, God, that's kind of scary to think but she's very very played she's got lots of scratches um, this big ding here which I'll do a close-up on um, I basically were always thinking my granddad here basically I got out my dad basically <laughs> I'm mumbling my guitar lessons be on Monday at four o'clock and my dad would pick me up and I got out of his van when I was coming back from the lesson and the gig bag I had was quite crap and the strap broke and it hit the ground, hit the road outside the house and uh, took it out of the case and all this was caved in, a big chunk of it was out and I was heartbroken and my granddad put some kind of filler in there and kind of fixed it for me so now it's kind of adds a bit of character to it um, which, which is what I love about guitars, you know, like I'm not a fan of buying relic guitars um, I, I like my guitars that can beat up, don't get me wrong but um, I wouldn't really buy an artificial beat up guitar, you know, I think because you want to put your own stories on here, like there's a big gash there and, you know, like all these things I did, you know, I didn't buy this like this, you know what I mean? Like this is all from, from my hands and playing and whatnot, you know, so yeah, Pacificas are great guitars, uh, I always recommend them, uh, like I say, they've changed it quite a bit now, this is an, like I say, an old one. Um, but a lot of memories, um, all my early years of playing the guitar was on this guitar here, you know. Um, and I used to 
teacher of it a lot when I used to go to schools as well, only up to a couple of years ago. So I can't play it though to you because the soldering has gone and I need to get round to soldering it. Um, so unfortunately I can't play it to you, but everything on this is stock, apart from the scratch plate. Um, I dropped this uh, at a pupil's house and it would have been fine, but it landed on the tone knob and it pushed it in so the whole scratch plate cracked. Uh, I've still got the original scratch plate somewhere, I've no idea where. So that's why it's very white, but the original one was the same colours as the knobs, like quite a yellow, like a smoky yellow. Goes to gig with this as well, you know. Um, so yeah, a lot of fun memories in this guitar and um, a guitar I will never ever part with, ever. So this is my Yamaha Pacifica 112, but like I say, fortunately I can't play it. But you can see a difference between a lighter wood and a slightly darker. Hopefully that comes out on the camera there. Um, like I said, I'll do a close up. But uh, yeah, love this guitar. Dear old friend. Next guitar I have to show you is my Ernie Ball Music Man Axis Sport guitar. This is a 1997 Axis Sport and I got this, I believe, in May 2009. And remember that because my best mate went travelling like the day after or something like that. Um, but yeah, this is a very rock and roll guitar. I've just put new strings on this actually because uh, I think the strings were like four years old which was on there. But let's say rock machine. <laughs> this uh, from Chandler's in Kew, like near Richmond kind of way, um, and I always wanted a music man um, from when I went to ACM and one of my favourite teachers there was a guy called Jamie Humphreys and he did Guitar Techniques, well still does I think, Guitar Techniques magazine and Lick Library, all that kind of stuff, so some of you may be aware of Jamie Humphreys and uh, he was a big music man guy and from watching him and being taught by him I always wanted a music man and eventually I got one. Um, lovely guitar, though I should say I have decided to sell this guitar because uh, I need, I, when I bought my Gibson, which I will get to in a minute, um, I kind of promised myself I would sell a guitar to help fund it and I don't really play this anymore really. Um, I probably realistically haven't, I haven't done a gig with this guitar since 2010, I would say, maybe 2011, I can't remember. Um, so, you know, you're talking five, six years since I last played this live and I don't really play it at home anymore really either. So, um, if anybody's interested in this guitar, like I say, it's a great guitar, I don't want to sell it. Um, it's just that, you know, I need to finance some, some things, you know. So, uh, if you're interested in this, drop me a line. But, um, yeah, very much a rock machine. Um, the Axis Sport came from the Eddie Van Halen guitars, so no, essentially Eddie Van Halen helped design this. Um, just hasn't got the Floyd Rose like the, uh, the Van Halen guitar. <laughs> guitars is that there's no finish on the neck at all. I believe it's finishing gunstock oil so it looks like you know a guitar from the 50s doesn't it you know. Um, it's a lovely feeling neck you know and uh, makes me want to take finish off all my guitars to be honest because it's such a, a nice feeling neck but um, yeah the, the cute little guitars really the Music Man you know the whole kind of four and two on there so uh, yeah Cool little guitar. This originally did have a scratch plate on it, so you can see that the screws there, the screw holes where the scratch plate would have been. But these early, no, mid 90s Music Man guitars had a scratch plate, but when I bought it, uh, it didn't have it. 
So uh, yeah, I didn't do that, and it's got a bit of a ding there, which again was like that when I bought the guitar. So, uh, but yeah, like I say, I have decided to uh, part ways with this, so if anyone is interested, drop me a message, and uh, we can talk about it. But this is my Andy Ball Music Man Axis Sport. <laughs> guitar which is this is my number one this is my this is my go-to guitar this is my first wife <laughs> this is my dearest friend um, this is my Fender Strat Plus it's a 1996 Strat Plus which I got in 1999 so we've we've been together a long time um, I have done oh it must be up to a thousand gigs with this guitar you know um, and she's been on sessions with me, with you know some big acts. Um, she's been on many, 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 many stages and TV shows, and been on TV many times with me. And she's my dearest friend. I uh, I love this guitar. Um, it's got gold lace sensors pickups in it. Um, she's got many dings and scratches. Actually, a new one, which is here, which I'll do a close up of now literally happened on the weekend. I have no idea how I did it. Um, if this guitar was finished in nitro cellulose, it would be proper Steve Ray Vaughan, but it is um, in polyurethane, which is basically bomb proof. So when you do get little nicks on it, it just dents as opposed to paint coming away. But um, yeah, I love this guitar. I've even now started wearing away um, the finish on the neck on this guitar. And like I just said, it's polyurethane. So the fact that I'm Wearing away the finish on her neck um, proves how much I played it. things uh, she's been up and down the country she's been around the world with me <laughs> you know uh, I love it and uh, I can just kind of get any kind of sound I want out of it really I've, no, I've had the guitar since I was 14 years old so um, you know uh, I, I know it very well you know and uh, you can see the volume knobs are very dirty and you know they've all been they get used a lot you know the whammy bar is kind of bent and not quite in shape. Um, oh, and I've got a great strap on it as well, a moody leather strap, which my girlfriend got me for my birthday last year, I think it was. Um, so, this is my strap plus, this is, this is my number one, I think she always would be my number one guitar, you know, um, I love her dearly. So, um, ah, so yeah, this is the first wife. <laughs> Many, many of you like, and um, 
And actually, someone was messaging me, actually a couple of people messaged me the other day saying, where's the beast? Where's the beast? Here is the beast. This is the beast. Well, what I call the beast. I didn't realise Bernie Marsden calls his guitar that. But this is my Gibson Les Paul. She's a 2002 Les Paul. And I got her in 2003, November 2003 to be precise. Um, again, done many gigs with her. Um, she's got certainly some battle scars and, you know, she's gone through to the wood on the back here. I've snapped the headstock on this twice. Um, I've got quite a few videos on this guitar. I even have a whole video dedicated to this guitar, um, which I'll put a link below. Um, she's a great sounding Les Paul. <laughs> Early 2000 Les Pauls seem to be, you know, regarded as very good ones. Uh, some of the newer Les Pauls I've played, you know, um, even some, you know, 2012s, 2013s, I haven't quite liked uh, of the standard, not the custom shop ones here. This is a, you know, a standard Les Paul. I think now it would be classed as a, tradi a traditional one, um, but this is a Les Paul standard to me. Um, since I've got my ES345, which I'll get to in a minute, She's taken a bit of a back seat, um, but uh, she's still a very, very special guitar, and um, I love her dearly. Uh, and like I say, we've done many gigs together as well. Um, she's uh, she's missing the plastic knob here on the pickup selector here as well. It's up on the shelf somewhere. But no, nah, great guitar. Um, like I say, I do have a whole video dedicated to this guitar, so you can uh, have a chat about it there. But uh, like I say, I've snapped the headstock twice. Headstock's taking quite a beating actually. Um, the whole guitar's taking a beating because it's finished in nitro cellulose. So like I mentioned with the Strat, it just ages better and it doesn't necessarily dent, you know, the paint will chip away and it just, it looks cooler, nitro guitars, nitro finished guitars. <laughs> Seven. This is my Taylor, um, another very dear friend of mine. This is a Taylor 114 CC. That's what this is. Uh, I got this in 2012, August 2012. Um, I was down Denmark Street with a good mate of mine, and um, we just went down because we knew the guys from Westside Music, and we went down there. And we're, he was telling me about the Sigma guitars, like the kind of cheaper Martin guitars. And we just do what we always do, every kind of couple of months me and my mate will meet up down there, have a few beers and just go and try out other guitars. <laughs> We're massive geeks. So um, I didn't go out intentionally buy it to buy a guitar and then four or five beers later I was about to go. I said I haven't got on this one yet and went in there and this guitar was kind of on the wall and I literally <laughs> strummed an E chord and was like, oh no, you know, like she spoke to me and I had to get it. Um, again, I've got another video, I think, talking about this, a very early video, um, somewhere on my channel. But um, it's a great guitar. Um, I wrote quite a lot of songs on uh, The Devil's On My Side was written on this guitar. The Devil's On My Side um, 
um, and played on my EP as well on this as well. Actually, and it's on Shiver as well, the acoustic sound on there. So um, yeah, it's a great guitar. She's got a few battle scars now, mainly from playing. I don't know if you can see here at the moment, but there's all, you know, pick scratches and gone through to the next stage of the wood by the sound hole here. So yeah, she's certainly been played a lot. And uh, I pretty much play this nearly every day, you know. Um, I string all my acoustics up with 12, 12 gauge. Um, just sounds better. If you go lighter than that, I think it's a bit, bit flappy, so. But uh, I've got some friends who've got 13 gauge on their acoustics and that's a bit, a bit too thick for me. This is my Taylor man, beautiful guitar. is my Fender Telecaster. This girl, she's called Lola. Uh, I got this July the 3rd, 2011, because it was a month for my birthday. Um, I got this uh, Adderton's in Guildford, actually. But um, yeah, I love this guitar. She's um, the 60th anniversary model of the Telecaster. So it's American standard Telecaster uh, with all the usual American standard stuff, but it's finished in nitro cellulose which sold it for me because like I've been saying I really like guitars in nitro. Um, she's starting to get a little bit beat up now uh, in a good way and I've recently just because um, the nitro necks get really sticky especially on, well, on this guitar especially it does and I've taken wire wall to it a few times and some wet and dry paper but it just kind of buffers back up but the other week I kind of went quite at it and uh, at the moment she's feeling really really nice so uh, nice and smooth so it's a lovely guitar, um, as you're probably seeing right now and be hearing. Um, and like I say, it's starting to get beat up now. Uh, the pickups in these I did replace um, just because Seymour Duncan sent some to me. So these are the Anakino Pro 2 Telecaster pickups. And I have a video on these pickups as well. If you want to check it out, I just realised that. <laughs> between this and my main strap, the, my, the first wife as I call her, um, I go between these as my two main Fender guitars now. So uh, yeah, Lola, she's beautiful. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
have in this room um, is my newest guitar, which uh, regular viewers will see a lot of and know about. This is my Gibson ES345 uh, Custom Shop 1962. This is of. Um, this is my newest guitar. I Alan McFly, I affectionately call her. Um, she's an uh, absolute phenomenal guitar. I've had her a couple of months now. End of January, I got her. Um, everything about it is great. Uh, I've wanted one of these guitars um, since I was 12 years old. Um, my my old guitar teacher had a Gibson 335, and uh, I always loved the look of it. I'm a big Back to the Future fan, and it turned out my McFly played a 345. 345 and 335 are pretty much exact. Well, they are exactly the same guitar. It's just that the 345 has gold hardware, and it's got the baritone switch where you can. Um, you know, get different phases and stuff. I don't use it that much, to be honest with you. The only time I do use it is when I'm teaching and I want to be a bit quieter and I'll knock it down to the next setting where you can, um, almost like a single coil kind of sound. But um, I'm trying to be very careful. I know I was saying earlier, I don't mind my guitars being beat up, but I'm trying not to beat this one up. But um, she's picked up a few, you know, pick scratches now and I've banged the headstock. Just a little, little chip there. Um, but uh, that's what happens when you play, isn't it? You know, if you're playing out, you, you know, you're gonna get little, uh, what's it, some people call love taps, or something like that on them. So, uh, I, well, I can see a few more little scuffs here, but um, I try and take care of her, but, you know, I, I've been playing her a lot. <laughs> This is my Gibson 345 and um, oh, she's beautiful. Abs look at her, just look at her. <laughs> I need to do now I need to cut over to my mum's house where I've got a couple of guitars there as well so hello here I am at my mummy's house um so this is my old Takimini acoustic guitar um this uh oh god when did I get this 2002 and a lot of playing have been done on this, a lot of songs have been written on this, lots of gigs have been done on this. Um, she's an old friend. Uh, I haven't really played her properly for a good few months. Nice bit of dry sweat there. Nice, this hasn't been cleaned in a long time. Um, my brother borrowed this of me. Um, oh gold. Well yeah, a couple of months ago, probably more than that, I can't remember if it was before or after Christmas. He wanted to use it in one of his videos and I don't think he's done it yet. 
So he's just kind of been staying here at my mum's <laughs> for some time now. Um, but um, she's a lovely old friend. Like I say, a lot of wear, lot of wear on this, and lots of dings and random ding here and stuff like that. And the neck's got a bit of wear on it. Um, like I say, I've got this. Uh, yeah, this was Chandler's as well. I got this in Q, and um, yeah, she was she was my main acoustic for many years. But then once I got the Taylor. It kind of um, took over, but I still have a very fondness for this, and this is another guitar which will be with me forever. And um, still sounds great, but the action on this is really high. <laughs> I, I can't believe I used to play of it so much. I used to do so much lead stuff on this, and I can still do it, but. Oh, I say that. Oh, this is hard to play. This is really hard to play. So um, anyway, this is my Taki Mini. This next guitar is where it all began for me. This is my uh, my first guitar. This is a classical guitar, a Honer classical guitar. I got in 1996 for my 12th birthday, and um, this is beat up. This is massively beat up. In fact, these look new. I would not be at all surprised. My little cousin was around here, and I would not be at all surprised she did that. I don't remember that being there, uh, but everything else, yeah, is is been from me. Um, I've worn through the fingerboard. Again, I have another video actually going in quite details about this guitar. Um, my first guitar, I think it's called. Um, don't know what tuning this is in. I think it's like E flat. Um, but uh, yeah, worn through the fingerboard here. I got this at Bell's Music, which was a very famous guitar shop here in Surrey, uh, in Surbiton. Eric Clapton got his first guitar there. Jimi Hendrix went in there. You know, it was a very famous shop. Um, but yeah, this this is where it all began for me, man. And um, she means a lot to me. Um, and it's weird when I when I see it and play it again, um, because you know all the memories of trying to play an F chord come back. You know, of that. You know, when trying to do a bar chord, especially on a on a classical guitar, because the necks are so big. Uh, so the whole thumb over the neck, you know, it's a bit uncomfortable. But um, yeah, for classical kind of stuff, it's um, it's no nice <laughs> if you're a classical player. So this is my first guitar. So there you have it guys, my guitar tour 2016. So uh, hopefully you all enjoyed that. Love to know what you think and by all means share me some stories for your guitars. What I love about guitars is that you can really put your personal fingerprint on them all, you know what I mean? And hence why I'm not a big fan of you know buying a relic guitar, a guitar made to look beat up. It's like, you know, guitars kind of tell stories and I know that sounds new age and hippie and stuff, you know, but it's true, they really do. And uh, you know, I, I look at my guitars and any little dings or something's happened, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember when that happened. You know, it's a bit like a photograph, you know? So um, yeah, like I said, I'm a big guitar geek, man. So anything like this, I enjoy. And if any of you have videos of your guitar tours, you know, your guitar collection, please let me know. I'd love to um, check them out and geek out with you. But um, who knows what will happen in 2017 with my guitar collection. Um, remember, he who dies with the most guitars wins. So, um, anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts. 
and me and all my guitars, we'll see you next week. Take care. Ah, Mike Bradley signing out.